sure maybe the library can still yeah. um, yeah. pick them. Yes, so you can come and pick those up afterwards if you like. Uh, but there should be some things that we'll be utilizing, including these super cute traffic light stickers. Uh, you'll find an HEB grocery ad, right, and then some uh, notes on traffic light eating. So again, welcome everybody. Um, I'm a mom of two, I'm a teacher by trade, as I mentioned, and we're gonna go ahead and get started with today's topic, which is traffic light eating and portion control. So we have a PowerPoint just for visual aids. So I know uh, Whitney's gonna try to help me out here, so bear with us with the technology piece. So hopefully everybody can see that. If you can see it, can you give me a thumbs up just so that I know we're good? All right, awesome. Okay, so this is gonna be our topic of discussion today. Uh, traffic light eating and portion control. We'll go to the next slide. Okay, see all my cool graphics here, right? So this is a big question, which obviously is the question um, that drove you here today, right? In some sort of capacity, why should we care about our health, right? Why is it so important? Um, and if you look at the little pictures here, so I try to make everything somewhat uh, kid friendly with the visuals. Um, you see that, you know, we really want to stay healthy so that we can continue to do the things that we love, right? So that we're not just living a long life, but we're living a life that we are living well, right? And sometimes those poor choices with nutrition and what we put in our body does not allow for us to do some of those fun things like travel, right? Like exercising, like uh, being on the water or even hanging out with family. Okay, so mom and dad, you can kind of take a look at these statistics. I know I have some kids watching, so I won't get too um, detailed with uh, the information. But some of the trends that we're seeing, right, uh, as far as poor nutrition choices, the lack of exercise is absolutely having a direct impact on our kids, right? They're getting sicker, sadder, um, and even more obese, right? And we know that these are definitely not healthy trends. Um, you can just kind of take a look at some of the stats that I have here, um, including an increase in prescriptions for some of these little ones, especially the two to four year olds, I think are um, somewhat shocking, right? So I add that content really for the parents so that you can kind of get a realization of what's happening um, in the United States. And when we ask the question why, um, it's really kind of a simple answer, right? You have the standard American diet, which scientifically has proven it's not the best. And then of course you have a sedentary lifestyle, right? So kids are not playing outside as much as they used to, right? They're sitting down a little bit more. They're not as active. So together we start to see these trends. Okay, so just to be a little bit more specific and I have the information I think is kind of loading here. You just, just kind of load it all up. <laughs> there we go. So sometimes when we make poor nutrition choices, right? We see um, an increase basically in mental disease and physical disease, as I like to refer to it as. Uh, nutrition deficit disorder is very much a big thing. Um, so an example of this, um, a child who let's say may eat a donut for breakfast, right? That's loaded with sugar. You'll see a change in their behavior, right? So after that sugar high, they're gonna crash and sometimes you'll start to see, right? A little behavior change that's you know, not uh, the best. And so sometimes you wonder, well, wow, I wonder what happens, right? Well, again, what you put in your body has a direct impact, right, on the behavior, on the performance, especially when we're talking about kids, right? We all want our kids to be successful students, right? We all want the best for them. We make choices, right, with putting them in various activities so that they're well-rounded and prepared to be successful in life. But oftentimes we forget about the food choices and what a direct impact that can have. Okay. All right, so what does the, um, here we go, there's a little bit more. Thank you, Whitney. <laughs> I don't have my clicker, so. Um, okay, so what does the science show us, right? What, how does all of this work, right? What's the explanation behind it, right? Because I'm a very, uh, very much of a science-driven person, right, when it comes to nutrition. So it's really simple when we put it this way, right? Your, your brain needs real food to function, right? When it has real food, the good stuff, and we're going to talk about what that means in just a moment with traffic light eating, it's going to be able to communicate with all of the other parts in your body better, okay? When your brain is fed some of the 
sticky stuff food, right? So like the bad food, the junk food, uh, an overload is what I'm referring to, right? It really can't function as well as it normally does, right? So it kind of gets confused um, when it has a lot of artificial ingredients, when it has a lot of processed food, and not the real food, right, that was meant to go in your body, okay? And you can kind of see here with our scale, right, um, if you are going to perform better, what's going to allow you to perform better? Of course, the healthy food. So mom and dad, I have this really for you as a visual and for my kids that are watching, just kind of take a look and you can see the difference. So if I were to ask my class here, right, which of the two has a more clear, um, let's say writing skill, right? So you're, you're able to tell what they're actually trying to say, right, in this particular assignment. I think almost everybody would say the one on the right right, the after. So this is actually from um, a study, right, and you see that right there, the Oxford Durham study, um, and it's a pretty interesting one. So um, they essentially gave, and this is, again, for really mom and dad to kind of know, um, did a little bit of a, an experiment, right, with omega-3s. So, and we'll talk a little bit about omega-3s in just um, a moment with traffic light eating. Uh, but they basically increased the dosage for a child who was experiencing issues of ADHD and ADD in class, um, was kind of lacking in the academic performance areas, uh, struggling in school is what we're referring to really. Um, so once those omega-3s were incorporated into their diet, um, they reassessed them and you can see the difference that it made. So again, when we go back to brain function and what really is best for our brains, right? Because if you are a kid watching, you are still growing, my friend. Your brain is growing, your body is growing, right? And you wanna make sure you're putting good things inside of your body so that you can be strong, you can be smart, and you can run faster on the field. All right, and parents, I wanna commend you for participating, excuse me, for participating today um, because again, it all starts with education, right? So a child education begins with educating the parents and hopefully that's a little something that I can do uh, for you guys today. I'm just gonna have a sip of water. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, so one of the things that I talk to families a lot um, is not just about nutrition, right? But I also talk about other um, pillars, right? And I refer to this as our lean foundation, right? So again, we're talking about, yes, the nutrition component, but we're also talking about lifestyle, right? How we live, exercise, how we move, attitude, how we think as a family, right? And individually, and also the foods that we eat, right? So together, all of these components work to create a lean lifestyle. So again, it's the attitude, right? The mindset of all of these things working in conjunction uh, so that we can live that long life, but live it well. All right. So let's get into the traffic light eating portion. So I'm going to ask you, my friends, to look in your bags and find this for me. Can everybody find this? And I want to see you. I don't know if we're going to be able to do gallery, but for my kids that are on, okay, we may not, <laughs> I may not be able to see you, but that's okay. I'm going to trust that you're doing it. Um, so there is a little news up here that says traffic light eating. So I want to make sure that everybody has this because this will be a really good reference. And uh, for those of you that may have something to write with, you might find it beneficial to, you know, maybe jot down some notes, okay? So this is what we're going to kind of transition to with um, traffic light eating, and we'll kind of dive into it a little bit. And then we're going to play a little game, and I'm going to put you to the test, okay? All right, so let's talk about traffic light eating and what that means. We'll go to the next slide. And there's your E, there we go. Okay, perfect. So whenever I'm talking to families about nutrition and how to make better choices for their family, right, we talk about it in this concept, right, because one, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, it's a great visual aid for kids, and we're going to play a game. You'll, you found um, some colorful stickers, right, uh, that go along with traffic light eating. So it's just an easy way for them to kind of take this concept and apply it, right, throughout their lifetime. 
So when we talk about green light foods, and we're going to get into the specifics in just a moment, right? We're talking about foods like you see in the picture right below the green circle, right? You essentially are talking about fruits and vegetables. And for the most part, you can eat as much as you want, right, every day. Okay, the yellow light foods are what we call slow down foods, right? So if you think about a car, right, you're slowing down with the yellow light foods. So they are still important for us, right, in our daily diet, but we don't want to have yellow light foods dominate our plate, okay? And then the third part of traffic light eating are the red light foods, right? So these are stop and think about it foods, right? And you can see some pictures here. So a lot of times this is where we see sugary treats, we see fast food options. Um, does that mean you should never eat them? No, but in moderation or special occasion. And we'll, I'll kind of give you some tips and tricks uh, when we get into that in just a second, okay? All right, so again, traffic light eating is a real life approach, right? So it's not dieting, this is a lifestyle change, right? This is what we're talking about with a real food approach, right, to healthy eating. And you can, again, reference this kind of as our guide. So when we're referring to green light foods, right, these are foods that are basically grown in the earth, right? So you can either find them in the ground or on a tree, right? That's essentially, that's the basic rule of a green light food, right? It's generally unprocessed, right? It's naturally colorful. This is what we talk about with phytonutrients, right? So there's lots of great things, right, in those fruits and vegetables. So when your parents tell you, right, that eat your vegetables, it's for a good reason, right? There's a lot of really great things um, in those green light foods that will help you grow. They can usually be eaten raw, but of course there's other ways to prepare. Uh, sauteing, steaming, grilling are some great options, roasting. Uh, they're generally low in calories, high in nutrients, and as I mentioned before, it's really hard to overeat fruits and vegetables, okay? So this is a great go-to for a snack, right? So just as kind of a tip before we move on to yellow light foods, right? So mom and dad, you get a drawer in your refrigerator, right, that is easily accessible for kids, and you can tell them when they come home from school, mom, I want a snack. Okay, go to the drawer and go pick something out, right, as opposed to going to the pantry and picking out, you know, something that may be a little bit more processed, okay? All right, let's move on to yellow light. And yellow light foods are, you see here, I mentioned slow down foods, right? So they're definitely a necessary part of our diet uh, for a variety of reasons, right? So there are healthy fats, healthy proteins, right? So all things that your body needs. Um, this is where we find, you know, um, again, foods like avocado, um, olive oil, avocado oil, nuts, right? So again, those are all considered yellow light foods that absolutely have nutritional value, right? And things that you should incorporate within your diet. Um, they provide a variety of different uh, vitamins and minerals, right? Usually have more fat or sugar than green light foods, because we do know that green light foods do have some natural sugars, right? So when we think about some of those fruits, for example, um, but again, those are good sugars, right? Versus, you know, the white sugar that you might find like in a donut or piece of candy or something, okay? Um, this also includes whole grains, right? So when we think about whole grain bread, whole wheat bread, um, there's definitely trends in the grocery store, I'm sure you've seen, when you go to the pasta aisle and you'll start to notice next time, um, whole wheat pasta, spaghetti, those are always, I find, better options than buying, let's say, the traditional pasta that's just white flour, right? Or, you know, do this test next time you're at the grocery store when you have a white loaf of bread and, uh, let's say, a whole wheat loaf of bread, you're going to notice there's a difference in one way more than the other. Right, so a lot of times with families, I talk about the white bread as being air bread because there really is no nutritional value, right, from your, that you're getting from that white bread, right? Just in the processing um, of that bread, a lot of things that work good for you are stripped, right? When we get to whole grains, it's a totally different story, right? Because you will get that protein in that fiber, okay? So far, so good, I hope, right? Um, all right, let's go to red light foods. And you see, these are stop and think foods, right? So take a look at the picture. You get an idea of what I'm referring to, okay? 
Uh, so we are referring to processed foods, right? Things that you can generally find um, like in an aisle, right? In a grocery store, uh, they're generally made in a factory, right? So they're man-made. Um, sometimes you can find some protein and fiber, but it's very rare, right? So again, when we think about foods that we're putting in our body and are we getting something that's gonna help us grow? The answer is more than likely gonna be no when it comes to red light foods. Yes, they may taste great, and yes, they may, you know, just, uh, you think about the idea of going to get, you know, a juicy burger, that sounds wonderful and great. But again, when you ask yourself, is this gonna help me run faster on the soccer field? Is this gonna help me, you know, grow or get taller, right? After a period of time of eating those same foods, the answer, unfortunately, is probably gonna be no, right? And you're just not gonna feel good overall. So the general rule of thumb that I share with families is this. If it is grown in the ground, right, for a tree, or if it is, let's say, um, found in the sea, right? So another yellow light food, for example, that I forgot to mention is salmon and seafood, right? Cold water fish, right? Lots of omega-3s that are wonderful for brain development. Uh, so mom, dad, if you can incorporate salmon within the kids' diet, that would be incredible. It's one of the best foods that you can feed your children that will help with brain development. And there's lots of studies that talk about omega-3s with that. The study that I showed you was actually the handwriting sample um, earlier on was from feeding those students salmon. So you want to cyber on that, I'm happy to do so. Uh, but again, you know, when we talk about just family nutrition with graphic light eating, it is not necessarily deprivation or taking everything away, but it's moderation, right? So there's a birthday party. Let the kid have a piece of cake, right? But balance it out with everything else that they're eating, okay? So maybe they're going to have a sandwich, right, some fruit, and then the piece of cake at a birthday party, right, and not have their entire plate dominated by red light food, okay? All right. Okay, so now I'm going to test you here. Uh, so you do have three sheets of stickers. You have green light stickers, you have yellow light, and you have red light, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is show you an image and you're gonna tell me by holding up, right, your strip with either the green light guy, the yellow light, or the red and tell me what you think it is, okay? So this is where the teacher comes out. We're gonna kind of break up the info, okay? So we're gonna get a little interactive here. Okay, so here we go, Whitney. All right, let's take a look at red meat. Okay, so I want you all, to, again, to hold up your stickers if you think, is it red light or is it yellow light? Okay. All right. Okay, if you selected, okay, red or yellow, you are right. And let me tell you why. Okay, so when we talk about protein selection with red meat, yes, a lot of studies, of course, you know, argue to limit red meat, right? There's a lot of scientific research I could talk to you about forever. Uh, but if you'd like some information on that, again, we can kind of sidebar. But it's all about the lean selection of meat, right? So getting those lean cuts. And if you're not really sure what that means, next time you're at the grocery store, talk to your butcher. Trust me, your butcher is excited to talk to people, even through the masks, okay? They just like to talk about what they do. And you can ask them for recommendations on lean cuts of meat, okay? So again, if you answered one or the other, you technically are correct. So it would be red light, right? If it was like the super fatty cut and it would be considered yellow light, again, which can be good, but if it's a lean cut of beef, okay? But I would suggest trying to incorporate, like if you need ideas, like a meatless Monday, incorporating some seafood into your diet. There's so many great options uh, for being creative. I'm sure if you just Pinterest uh, meatless Monday recipes, you find a ton of different things. Okay, now let's look at our egg here. Okay, so you have two options. Is it yellow light or green light? So let's see. And some of you I can't see, but I'm just going to trust you're doing this too. <laughs> okay. Thank you, girls, for participating. I love it. 
Okay, so again, if you selected yellow light, right, you are correct, okay? So eggs are a great source of protein, we know that, right? But a lot of it has to do with the preparation. So if you are, let's say, using um, an olive oil, right, to cook your scrambled egg, great, right? Because olive oil is one of those good fats, right, the unsaturated fat that our body actually does really well with. But if you are slathering tons of butter, which I know sounds really, really yummy sometimes, um, and there's a little bit of an off balance, maybe it's a fried preparation, right, instead of, um, you can poach an egg, right? You can boil an egg. There's lots of different ways to prepare. You can throw it in a casserole, right? That's a pretty popular thing to do nowadays, mix with vegetables and eggs, throw it in the oven, right, with some, a little bit of almond milk. But again, a lot of it is about preparation and moderation, okay? All right, let's look at a banana here. So green light, yellow light, this should be easy for everybody. Right, this is a green light, very good. <laughs> good job. All right, now this is a tricky one. Okay, this is another tricky one. So green light or yellow light with the salad that you see here? Green light or yellow light? This is tricky. So for those of you that are looking at the salad, right, there is dressing in the salad, right? This is typically what we call a Caesar salad, right? Okay. Very good. So a salad like this could technically, it could make it green light, but what makes it red light, right, is the dressing, right? And that's oftentimes a lot of the reasons why salads kind of get thrown into the yellow, or I'm sorry, red light category because of the amounts of dressing, right, and the ingredients that go within those dressings. Um, so this is just kind of a tip. One of the best dressings that I use, it's so, so easy to make, and it is a fan favorite. I have people ask me for this all the time. Olive oil, freshly squeezed lemon juice, about half of a lemon, right? A little bit of salt and pepper and a tiny bit of honey. And that's it. And you mix it up, right? You can put it in a mason jar, kind of keep it uh, for the week, right? Whenever you're putting a salad together and it tastes so refreshing, right? Olive oil, balsamic vinegar, definitely a better option than some of those creamier um, salad dressings. Okay, so again, you can see how a green light food can transition into a red light, right? So if we take an apple, for example, the apple starts out as green light, right? But once we, let's say, take off the skin, puree it, add sugar, right? Cook it down into applesauce, now it's turned into yellow light, right? Because you can still get some nutritional value out of it, except, right, maybe there's a little bit more sugar. Now, it can go to red light. You take that same apple, right? You put it in a buttery crust, right? And you're making apple pie with loads of sugar. So again, I use it as an example so that you can see that it's all about the preparation, right, of these foods, right? And how something can go from green light very quickly to a red light. And so it's your job to make sure you stay within that green and yellow light. Okay. All right. Um, and we'll kind of go through these quickly just for the sake of time, right? So when we look at um, either or, so is this yellow light or is it red light? Nuts are in, very good, the yellow light category, okay? So again, they provide the right kinds of fats to your diet. Uh, walnuts are great. Almonds are great. Um, again, really, it just kind of depends on your personal preference. Just make sure you're not overloading. Again, remember we talked about going from yellow light to red light. If it is coated in, uh, let's say, a candy coat with sugar, then you're quickly going to take that yellow light nut, right, and make it red. So again, you know, roasting is a great technique to get some, you know, more flavor. Uh, seeds are a really great option as well. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds are really great ways to get some of those um, essential fats within your diet. Um, again, introducing to your kids as a snack, right, um, something that will provide some nutritional value for them, okay? Okay, uh, you see here, right, there is brown rice. So with brown rice, I think I actually messed up on this one, so I'm giving this one oh. to you. Uh, so this one is yellow light, so again, it goes with our whole grains. Um, a question that I get quite frequently, um, a lot of times has to do with like pasta or rice or bread. 
And I'm always going to suggest going with um, the least processed way, right? So in this case, brown rice. So with brown rice, you'll get more protein and more fiber within uh, these grains of rice versus white rice. Uh, so you can't ask for brown rice, right? If you go out to a restaurant and you typically get, um, let's say, white rice, a lot of times there, there's a little upcharge for the brown rice, but they'll have it. So you just got to make sure you ask for it, okay? All right, the same thing I mentioned with bread, right? So with bread, is it yellow? Is it red? We look at the label, which we'll talk about um, in just a moment. So go ahead, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, that's okay. So when uh, you hold a loaf of bread at the grocery store, you can do this test for yourself, right? Pick up a bread loaf that is whole grain and pick up one that is white and kind of do the weight test. I mentioned before, right, a lot of times I describe white loaves of bread as air bread, right, because there really is very little uh, nutritional value in that bread versus, right, the fiber and protein that can be found um, in the whole wheat or whole grain, okay? And do that store test, like I mentioned. This one is an easy one, right, kind of a no-brainer here, but I do want to kind of elaborate on this because I don't want y'all to think that I'm anti-hamburger. <laughs> okay, so when we look at this picture, right, I'm typically referring to a hamburger that you would find like at a fast food restaurant. Unfortunately, a lot of the preparation that we see at fast food places, it's all about preparation, right? And the types of oils and things like that that are used. So in this case, this would be considered a red light food, right? The type of bun that's used, the condiments, right? The ingredients that go within those condiments. Um, and then of course, the preparation of the burger. Now, can you make it work to be healthy? Absolutely. Um, a lot of fast food restaurants, um, I'm spacing on one of them that's in San Marcos. It's a burger chain. Um, yeah. someone by the outlet. They're doing like veggie burgers. You can ask for a lettuce for a Hat Creek. I think it's about Hat Creek Burger. So they're kind of getting with the program, right? And realizing that people are actually wanting healthier options. So moderation is key and trying to make it as green light as possible. So if I'm going to get a burger, right, maybe I'll ask for a lettuce wrap. Maybe instead of the regular fries, I'm going to ask for a sweet potato fries. So you can absolutely make it work for yourself. Um, or instead of getting fries, um, you know, maybe opt for the fruit cup, right? So there's different things that you can do as a parent, right? Kids, you can, you know, ask and try different things too. Sweet potato fries are really great. Um, you just got to try them, right? A fruit cup instead of fries isn't going to kill you one day, okay? So again, you'll find that restaurants um, and fast food places are trying to make some effort um, in providing healthier options. And you can even do this at home yourself, right? So again, buying that whole wheat, that whole grain bun, going bunless, right? Leaving out the condiments. Um, you can still add your cheese if you'd like to add some cheese, right? But try to go, if you can, for organic, right? Look at the ingredients, make sure that it is cheese and um, add some veggies, right? Add some lettuce, add some tomato, add some onion um, and make it tasty, right? And make it fun. The more colorful it is, you know that you are getting that green light in your diet, okay? Okay, and then um, I think we kind of get the idea, right? With ice cream, red light or yellow light, this would be considered a red light food just because of the sugar. And again, we'll talk about, um, labels in just a second, but there are some brands of ice cream that are better than others, right? So it's all about if you know how to read a label and if you're equipped with the skills, then you can make some better choices, but it's moderation, right? If you're at a birthday party, it's a special treat. It's all right to have ice cream every once in a while, just not every day. All right, so practice at home with your stickers. So each of you has, right? Um, a set of green, red, and yellow. I know we kind of used it for our game here, but go into your pantry, right? Go into your house, open up the refrigerator doors, and have a conversation with your parents or parents who are listening without kids. Do this little activity, you know, with your kids so that you can start to have a healthy conversation about food so that they can start to understand what good choices are, right? So if you're going to leave a bowl of fruit on the table or you're going to have a special drawer in the refrigerator, they will eventually comply, right? So consistency is key and parental modeling is key. All right. So what's in the food that we eat? I don't believe this is in your bags, but um, again, I'm happy at the end of this my, to share my email and I can send you a little copy of this. Uh, so what you see here, right, is a nutrition facts label. 
And this is one of the tools that I think is the most um, handy for parents when they're going grocery shopping because it can be really overwhelming. And sometimes it's a matter of how can I trust? If something says that it's healthy, is it really healthy, right? Um, unfortunately, with marketing, right, and the food industry with the way that it is, they can pretty much say whatever they want on those boxes, right? So it's really going to be up to you to determine what ingredients, right, are within what you are buying. So hopefully this is going to be, um, you know, somewhat beneficial. So we'll kind of start here. So if you look at the picture that's on the slide, right, you see the yellow area that is highlighted. That's going to tell us the serving size. So this I talk about, uh, like, with chips, right? I mean, who doesn't like chips sometimes? So you like that crunch, right? But again, it's all about serving size. Sometimes those bags of chips have multiple servings, right, in one bag. So the information that you see on the label, right, is oftentimes reflective of just that one serving. So if you are, let's say, eating that whole bag of chips and it says that there's two servings within that bag, you essentially have to double everything that you see here. Okay, so it's very important that you pay attention to serving size when it comes to nutrition labels, all right? Okay, so the area that you see in pink, right? These are areas that I often say, you know, you really don't want to eat too much of these. This is when we can see like, you know, the uh, total fat, saturated fats, very different than unsaturated fats that I mentioned with like the nuts and the olive oils, right? Trans fat is definitely something that you want to try to avoid. Right. Um, and if, again, if you want to kind of get into the scientific reasons of why is that so bad, I'm absolutely happy to share some studies with you. Um, cholesterol, sodium, right, the salt intake. Um, so the area in pink is really important to kind of look at that. Right. When you look at the area that's highlighted in green, this is really an area that I drive people's attention to. Right. As well. This is where you'll see the fiber, right, the amount of sugar and protein. So you don't really want to see that sugar number get very high as far as grams of sugar, because then you know that you're consuming or allowing your child to consume a product that has a lot of sugar in it. And we already know, right, that that sugar is going to give them that spike in their blood sugar. So they're going to be on that sugar high. But what happens after that high, they come crashing down, right? So we want to make sure we're monitoring that, right? Um, and then fiber, of course, okay? Um, and then the area in blue really just kind of gives us, you know, a general idea, right, the percent daily values based off of the standard American diet, the 2000 calorie diet. Um, but at the bottom, right, of, um, let's say, a box of cereal, for example, when you're looking at the label, is really the most important part. And the reason I say that is because that's 100% going to tell you exactly what is in that box of cereal or let's say that yogurt or whatever it is that you're purchasing. There are unfortunately some loopholes that the food industry has in this section where it can be a little deceiving. So I generally tell people this. If you look at the ingredient list and there's a ton of things you can't pronounce, right? And there's like 30 of them or you see a number, right? Like, you know, um, yellow with a number associated or red with a number associated, you probably want to stay away from that, right? And there's lots of studies that link artificial sweeteners, right, um, to altering brain chemistry, um, to even leading to Alzheimer's later down the road, right? So again, you really want to kind of pay attention to that ingredient list because that's really going to tell you what's in that package, okay? All right, and just um, very quickly here, and that's what I mentioned before, right? The food ingredients, that's okay. So things to look for, and I'll go through this uh, very quickly because I know that we're kind of towards the, the end of our time, right? So things to look for, you see here, high protein, high fiber, low in sugar, um, zero trans fat or low in trans fat, right? Whole grain, right? Those are all things that you wanna look for, um, you know, when you are reading uh, a label. And then the things to avoid are some things that I mentioned before, right? Trans fat, artificial color, artificial flavor, high fructose corn syrup, right? Hibernated oils. Um, there's a long list, um, and I'm happy to share that list with you all. Um, I kind of have like a reference sheet. So if you want to email me, um, you know, afterwards, I'm certainly happy to share those resources with you as well. Okay. Now, for the sake of time, we're probably just going to kind of click through these um, here. 
Again, this was kind of name that food, but we're just gonna go through it quick. So um, if you take a look here, right, this was, this is a cereal I was raised eating as a child, <laughs> you know, but when you look at what goes in froth, it's like, you're basically talking about a big bowl of sugar, right? So again, and I just kind of highlighted in red uh, some of those ingredients that I mentioned to stay away from, okay? All right, here's another example, super quick. Um, you see, right, uh, Wonder Classic, this one more, Whitney. Uh, there we go. Uh, classic white bread, this is, again, what I refer to as um, air bread, right, that really doesn't provide a lot of nutritional content or value, okay? Another family favorite, I'm sure you probably have seen, right, Cool Whip. So you see, again, right, corn syrup, hydrogenated oils, right, high fructose corn syrup, okay? <laughs> Uh, Sunny D, right, another uh, popular uh, favorite a lot of times with families, right, lots of sugar, yellow, you see this is what I, I mentioned earlier, right, a lot of times in those labels when you start to see colors with numbers, that's what we're referring to as those things that are kind of altering brain chemistry, right, and especially in kids, um, that has an even bigger impact on their brains than an adult brain, so just kind of keep that in mind, okay. This one's gonna break hearts, I know. This one's gonna break a lot of kids' hearts, right? So when we look at macaroni and cheese, right? And the powder um, that goes within preparing the macaroni and cheese, you can kind of zone in on the ingredients here, right? Corn syrup, artificial flavors, you see again, right? Uh, calcium phosphate, yellow five. Um, again, there's so many things that you can't pronounce, you're probably better off just kind of staying away from, okay? All right, and then I think I had one more, right? And again, this is probably gonna upset some kids here, so I'm sorry if I'm breaking your heart, uh, but Pop-Tarts as well, right? Pop-Tarts are another uh, example, right? When you read the label of what goes into that Pop-Tart, right, and you see what the ingredients are, some of those uh, kind of stay away ingredients, okay? All right, so now let's get to the recipe part. So I, just for you all, went to HEB, um, to go and grab some ingredients uh, for the chicken salad wrap, okay? Um, now, I'll be very honest with you, our family is plant-based, um, so you could use, uh, or pescatarian, I should say, because we do eat seafood. So you could use, um, let's say, canned tuna instead of um, chicken, if you'd like, okay? Um, or, I mean, technically, you could probably just, you know, increase the vegetable and make it pure, purely plant-based. All right, so with the chicken salad wrap, you should have a little recipe card like this um, in your bag. Um, so feel free to kind of get that out if you'd like. And if you have the ingredients for this and you're gonna make it along with me talking, fantastic. Um, for today and the sake of time, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the process. So with the chicken salad wrap, this is a really great uh, way to meal prep, right? Um, you can prepare a lot of it, for example, like on Sunday, um, put it in a Tupperware. It can be great for you to take to work, right? Very quickly, it can be great to put in your kids' lunch as well. Um, I always find if you go with chicken, you know, um, and if you have the time, absolutely roast it yourself, right? Go for it. And it's actually pretty cost effective to do that, right? By just throwing the chicken in the oven, right? With just a little bit of seasoning and olive oil, and there you go. But if you don't have the time, like many people, you know, you have grocery stores that provide really great options of prepared food already. So in this case, this is the roasted chicken, right, from um, our local grocery store here. So what you would do is essentially just get a cutting board out, right? Um, and parents, have your kids involved in the process, right? That's also kind of what I wanted to talk about when we, when we discuss the concept of parental modeling and how you know you have to kind of practice what you preach, right? And get them involved in the conversation. So it's not a matter of, all right, mom and dad are you know, gonna be on a health kick, right? Here we go. But it is more of a conversation of them seeing, right? Whole foods, okay, we're gonna cut this chicken and we're gonna have this as our protein, right? This is gonna help your muscles, right, recover. This is gonna, you know, help you grow, right, your body. Again, it's all about the delivery, right? Your body, you know, think about like a construction site, right? And so uh, when you think of those big skyscrapers, right, and the foundation for those skyscrapers, that's where we need, right, like our muscles and bones to be strong. So mom and dad are gonna try to prepare a nutritious meal to help you grow, right? So again, it's all about that delivery. 
So you'll take your chicken, you'll shred it and just kind of put it to the side, right? You can easily do that with just like a fork, right? Um, you'll also grab some seedless grapes. Um, I got green just because my children, for some reason, like these. <laughs> they like the color um so red is fine as well uh but i find buying seedless is better because you're going to cut them up anyway and you just don't want to have to fuss with taking the seed out um but if you that's your thing then that's okay too so just whatever kind of grape you prefer um nuts right in this case i have some walnut halves in pieces um what i would recommend doing is just putting some on a cutting board right uh, mom, dad, you with your nice skills, right, kind of cutting them into smaller pieces, or you can put them in a plastic bag, right, get the kids involved and have them just go to town and, you know, uh, break them into little pieces or get like a little meat tenderizer and have them involved in the process just to break those up a little bit more. But any that could really work, pecans, walnuts, almonds, whatever really you have in your pantry. This is about the uh, amount of Greek plain Greek yogurt that you would need. I got this one just to kind of show you about a cup size, right? So plain Greek yogurt um, is preferred, right? For a variety of different reasons. I mean, you're not gonna find uh, loads of sugar, right? It's a great source of protein. You'll actually find more um, protein and nutritional benefits of plain Greek yogurt versus a glass of cow's milk. So that, that's just kind of an FYI. Um, and then, this is the part where, you know, it's really kind of up to you. So if your child is, let's say, kind of reluctant to put the mix of the chicken, the grapes, the nuts, and the yogurt, or when you mix it all together in the bowl, they're like, okay, I don't know if I can do the lettuce wrap. Maybe you do the lettuce wrap, mom and dad. But, you know, give them um, whole wheat crackers, right? Give them um, a whole wheat piece of bread, right? And again, it's all about where they are at and meeting them with where they're at. Right, so and having realistic expectations with your kids as well, right? So having them try it, it's about consistency, right? Research shows that it takes eight to 10 times before a child will like something, right? So you can't give up if it's tough, right? The first time around, eight to 10 times. So just kind of keep that in mind. So when you mix all of this together, right? Just a little bit of maybe sea salt and pepper, uh, kind of depending on your kids' taste. You know them better than I do, right? Put it in a bowl. And then maybe you set up like different options. You have your lettuce wraps, you have um, you know, your whole grain bread, and maybe you even have some whole grain crackers and you let them choose, right? And have them be involved in the process, right? To make it that much more um, inviting um, so that they're a little bit more open to trying it. Okay, and then there's just one more thing that I wanted to add, which I think is on the PowerPoint at the end. Um, let's see if we can get there. And that's really your homework, right, um, as a family. And so in your bags, I'll just kind of start talking about this as we get that going. In your bags, um, you have a family challenge, okay? Um, so let me go back real quick. There we go, perfect. So you have a grocery ad that's in your bag here, okay? And what I want you to do, and this will be kind of fun again, kind of testing your knowledge on what we talked about with Track It's Like Eating today, go through the grocery ad and maybe you get, you can use your stickers if you want to, um, you can use a green, yellow, red crayon or marker and just kind of go through it and have a conversation with them. like. Hey, let's look at this avocado from what we learned today. Like, what do you think that is? Do we think that's green light? Do we think that's yellow light? Right? Um, go to the back, right? And let's take a look at, um, let's see here, maybe some of these soda drinks, right? So that's a good conversation, a transition to talk about, you know, sugary drinks, right? And maybe as a family, we set a goal of, all right, instead of having, a sugary drink at dinner every night, maybe let's try to have a glass of water, maybe make it even more fun, right? And put some um, berries or herbs and try to have it infused, right? And show your kids the different options. And they might say like, oh yeah, look at that. There's cucumbers in there. I don't know, let's try it out and see how it goes. Um, so again, get your kids involved with the process. And this is really why I wanted to do this family challenge so that you in your home Right, could have a conversation with your kids and make it interactive, right? Uh, because essentially it's getting them to be part of the conversation so that you are, go ahead, Whitney, um, thank you. 
you are, you know, learning as a parent, but you're also going to give them, right, the gift of health, right? Because if you can incorporate these practices now, right, and start to make some of these adjustments um, in your family's diet, right, and create a sustainable lifestyle change so that you don't feel like you're depriving anybody of anything, you can still incorporate those sweet treats. Um, and for those of you, let's go to the next one, please that are, uh, thank you, social media savvy. Um, I have tons of tips on our social media for the H2 Life. You can see my two kids there uh, with my husband, but go to the H2 Life, get some tips. I have tons of recipe ideas, uh, things that are very kid-friendly, smoothies, treats, you name it, it's there. Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, we have a channel with um, a cookie demonstration as well that you might find fun also. But again, I just want to know kind of at the end of, um, you know, my time here, I don't know if we can open it up to questions and answers um, for anybody who may have a question. Um, but I just wanted to thank you all for spending the afternoon with me and hopefully you took away some tidbits of info that you can incorporate in your day to day. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. I don't think we can unmute everybody and see. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> okay, you might have to unmute yourself if you have a question. <laughs> but again, I just wanted to thank you all for spending time with me. Thank you girls for tuning in. Uh, thank you the library for having me as a guest today and everybody have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.